when I walked off the track, I didn't want to think about what was coming, the major champs or, or the physios or, or, or the sessions that I'd just done or had coming. I didn't want to think about it. I wanted to completely shut off. And so I just went and got the gear out of the garage, stuck it in the back of the car and just went. Fishing, where I just didn't have to think about anything other than what I wanted from myself and just enjoy myself on the bank, I suppose saved my career. I live for my own adventures. 48 hours seems an awful lot of time to people that are non-anglers, but in the world of carp fishing, it's that. And I love waking up on a, on a chilly morning and just sparking up the kettle, and I, I love watching the sun go down. And I say to some people that have never even fished before, I'm like, I've seen more sunsets in the last year than you'll see in a lifetime. The things that we see as anglers, particularly carp anglers, because of the time we spend on the lake, it's hard to describe, I think. Dino, we are trackside, and I'd like to know first, how do you split your time these days between bankside and trackside? There, there's areas of the year, parts of the year, when I just don't fish. When the summer holidays, I do a lot of academies, do a lot of coaching through them. So there's probably two months of the year in the middle of the summer when I don't even look at the rods, don't even think about fishing. But ironically, when, when the weather's sort of 30 degrees or pushing that way and 20 degrees at night, that's the time of the year I don't actually want to be on the bank that much anyway. A little bit of surface fishing in the evening, something like that, but I don't really feel like I'm missing too much then. But back in the days when I was competing, every given break that I had, so the older I got, the more breaks in the week I got, I generally had two days off and five days on. Those two days would be spent on the bank somewhere doing something. Tell us a little bit about how difficult it is to combine a professional career in athletics competing at the highest level with squeezing those hours on the bank in. It's surprisingly easy, I think, if I'm absolutely honest, because I mean, when I've got to the end of my week, which is like a Thursday um, or a Wednesday when I was getting on a bit, I had nothing else to do, that was it, you know, and, and athletics was a massive part of my life because that's how I earned a living at that stage, but the way I just stepped away from track and field, when I, when I walked off the track, I didn't want to think about what was coming, the major champs or, or the physios or, or, or the sessions that I'd just done or had coming, I didn't want to think about it, I wanted to completely shut off. Um, and so I just went and got the gear out of the garage, stuck it in the back of the car and just went, you know. I remember one, one part of my career, I think it was 2002, um, I bombed out of the Commonwealth Games, which was in Manchester, and, uh, and I didn't take it particularly well. And I remember coming home and I was, a, yeah, if I'm honest, I was a right dick indoors. Um, and the missus just went, just go fishing, just go fishing for the week. And I took myself out to Fisherbill in France for the week um, and just came back and had a good stern look at what, the, what I wanted for the rest of my life. Um, and got on, with my, got on with my track and field. But it was that week fishing where I just didn't have to think about anything other than what I wanted from myself and just enjoy myself on the bank that I suppose saved my career because in 2002 after bombing out the Commonwealth Games I was I was ready to hang the spikes up let's, let's not beat around the bush I was you know I weren't happy. As a young man as well 2002 you'd have been 20. That's ever so kind. Four? But three? Uh, no I was 26 in 2002. So I was in my prime, if I'm honest, and it was by far the best chance I ever had of winning a gold medal. And I suppose because of what happened in Manchester or what didn't happen in Manchester, that's why four years later I, I kept going and you know picked up the medal in, in Melbourne. Now, as a keen observer of athletics, it would be remiss of me not to ask you, what was a week like? Just for those of us who have never operated at the elite level of athletics, Dino, what does it actually involve? A lot. <laughs> I mean, I, I used to struggle to keep weight on and I was packing in well over 4,000 calories a day. Um, so the, the training was, I mean, it, it took a long time. I used to start at nine o'clock. So I used to have a couple of people that trained with me on and off. But the vast majority of my career, I trained on my own. My greatest training partner was my stopwatch. You know, like a game of golf, your greatest adversary is, is the scorecard. Um, so I'd be ready to go at nine o'clock every single morning and I'd pretty much smash it all the way through till two o'clock in the afternoon. And most professional athletes would do six days a week, two sessions a day. And I would do six days a week for the vast majority of my career, but instead of doing two sessions a day that took up the entire part of my life, you know, I, did, I wasn't one of these people, and I'm the same with everything in my life, fishing now, athletics back then. I didn't want it to 
be everything that I thought about. I, you know, when I was eating, I didn't want to think about it. When I was on the toilet, I didn't want to think about it. I just wanted to read my paper and get on my phone, you know, but it was, so I used to get everything done in the morning, that was it. So I used to start at nine, I'd be done by two, and then after that, I'd either go fishing, go golf, chill out with a wife, or just, just, just have a life, you know? I, I, I'm not one of these people that is obsessive about anything. I put everything I've got into it, but there has to be time away, otherwise I'd just burn out. And d did that cost you in your career? No, I don't think it did. There's, there's, look, there's lots of people that can say my way would have been this way and my way would have been better. I remember a doctor saying to me once when I was, I was in there getting some torn muscle or broken bone sorted out, and he said, um, he said, if you trained at 80%, you'd have been healthy for the whole of your career. I'd have been like, yeah, but I'd have come sixth, seventh or eighth. And I don't get up in the morning and smash myself to the bone and, and puke every single day to, to come in the top eight. I want to win medals. And I'm not saying...